Hi, I'm um, Liz Quilty. I actually don't really know Python uh, much. Um, I work as a server, I fix servers, uh, Linux sysadmin for a living, but in my spare time I just like to make and hack things, um, as, you see, as you can see. So I actually don't know Python. Um, before the tutorials yesterday I had no idea really what I was doing. I was cobbling bits of code that I saw here and there that did stuff and, until it worked. And when it didn't work I kind of harass a friend who knows Python, what's wrong? Oh, you forgot that, or this, or, you know. So um, yeah. if you see something that needs correcting, by all means, I've got a GitHub for all the code, just do a push. <laughs> so for what I've done here, this is a child's toy pretty much, and they come with that control you can see there, which is horrendously horrible because you don't know what button does what, and it's not really intuitive, but it is great for the kids to kind of put together and, um, you know, as you do. Um, the USB controller, so you can take out the actual controller that comes with it, and not use a little arm, and this is a USB kit. And it's particularly good because you can use it with Windows and it comes with a CD, and it, again, it basically just has the same controller with a picture, it's an image. Which again is not intuitive, not overly easy, but it does allow you, I think, to do steps. You can go do this step, do that step, uh, and do multiple steps, which is kind of good, except that, as I said, I'm a Linux sysadmin, and we don't even have Windows in our household, so we thought, well, we'll, we'll get it and we'll see what we can do with uh, Linux. And um, so yeah. That's what I used as a Raspberry Pi because I thought, well, it's small, it can fit, you know, with it. it obviously, you can tell by the box, it ended up a little bit bigger. Um, I'll show you what's in the box, actually. Uh, the problem with the Raspberry Pi is that the power has to be exactly right, and this is USB 1, so we had some clashes with a USB Wi Fi, which is why I've actually put the box, which has got a. Um, it's got a full USB, it's got an actual wireless access point in here and some speakers, and that's all that's in there really is, is just that. There's nothing fancy, and a Raspberry Pi, of course, and of course you can see some sensors here. Um, I used my son who was sick, you can tell by the tissues how sick he was, but it kept him occupied for at least five hours, it was great, <laughs> it was quiet, and he just sat there and, you know, fiddled it all out, and, and he couldn't figure out the arms, so I gave him the USB bit, and he spent another couple of hours pulling that out, and putting the USB board in, and, and then he kind of just left it, so I thought, well, there must be more to this, I can do something, surely. So, I don't know if anyone's familiar with setting up a Raspberry Pi, it's pretty easy. The instructions are on here. Um, you can set up a Raspberry Pi, and it's just literally writing an image to an SD card. Um, because it's on an SD card, you can mount it on your normal laptop, so you don't need configs to do whatever for networking, or whatever you want, before you boot it up, and it just works, it's pretty easy. Um, for this to work, you actually have to add UDEV rules so that otherwise you'll need root to access it and you need to, you, um, for me, for my use, I wanted to have it running by a web page, so it's completely, I'm not touching it, it's moving, you know, it's, it's internet of things. Um, so I added this line to my UDEV and that effectively allowed me to run it as different users by adding them to the plug dev group. And of course I added the Apache to the plug dev group so I could just run it uh, fine. Um, if you're wanting to do this, by the way, I've got all this commented and on the GitHub with the scripts, with the URLs. Um, it needed a newer version of Pi USP, so the one that comes with most um, distros of Linux and that didn't seem to cut it. I had to install this one, which was pretty painless. That's pretty much the commands I did to, to do it. Um, go to the URL, it's probably easier because there might be different versions by the time you, if you try this. And there's the GitHub which has got all the code that I'm gonna show you today, all the stuff that I've done with it. Um, and this uh, robot arm, if you're looking to buy one, is known as the Aoi or the Maplin. There's a bunch of different names, but you can tell because it looks exactly the same. It's the same color. And if you Google robot arm, this is pretty much what you know, comes up and they're everywhere. And they're like 50 to $80 or so. And then the USB is about 20 to 40, depending on where you go. I'm pretty sure we got this from JCAR, so it's fairly commonplace, easy to get. And um, yeah, they are quite cheap and the gearing is not overly great. So you will hear crunching with some of the turns. <laughs> and the fact that I've tested it a fair bit as well. Um, I was trying to get it to play a ukulele last night, but it couldn't hold the pick well enough. <laughs> Otherwise you would have had that as well. Well, cause someone kind of just, just jokingly said, I'm surprised you haven't got it playing a violin. Hey, I've got a ukulele in the car, you know. <laughs> so this is the uh, guts of the main function that I'm using, 
um, you send it a command for each thing, and it's a very simple command of string. Um, as you can see, it says robot arm control transfer. That's pretty much the guts of it. Afterwards, you can see it sleeps one second whilst it's doing the move, and then it sends it zeros, which stops the move. And if you don't send those zeros, it keeps on going until it's tuned all its gears off. So you really need to have the stop on. I mean, if you know what you're doing and you know that you're going to send a stop yourself on some other one, you can remove all that delay and remove all the stops. Um, but that's the basic function that I'm using, checking if the arm's there, if the arm is there, no error, we'll keep going through and we'll move it. And then you've just got the move command. And that's pretty much it, to move the arm. So you've got different joints. You've got the base, which rotates uh, left, right. You've got the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists, and then the grip. You've also got a light on here as well, which uh, turns on and off, which is quite cool. So once you've got that, you can literally automate anything because you're on Linux. You can set a cron, so at 6 o'clock every morning, it reaches up and turns the light switch on or taps you on the head or, you know, whatever you want to do. Or just make it spin around circles till it breaks, you know, <laughs> depending on how you do it. So um, I've got a PIR sensor, which is like a motion control here, and that's just plugged on to the GPIO ports and I'll open it up again, on the Raspberry Pi. And Raspberry Pis are good because the GPIO ports on the Pi are fairly easy to just, that's literally just three wires plugged onto different pins, and it's fairly easy to access with Python, and there's plenty of documents all over the show which show you how to do that. And that means I've got a sensor that when someone moves past, they can do stuff. So then I can trigger things by motion. So, you know, you can, I'll just show you. Let's see. So I've got a program here which is pretty much hello world, almost. And it, I'll just try and make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. So this basically takes a random set of greetings and says them. That's what the speaker's for. I'm using the eSpeak libraries, which is the PYTTSX um, library. I found this on the web. I didn't really know how to, it looked simple enough, it was like four lines of code I had to add. Managed to add it all and that, that worked all right. Oops. So that should be working if someone walks past the motion sensor. Cross fingers, unless I've knocked some wires. There you go, it's waving. Um, I've put a wait of six seconds because otherwise it just keeps on going, hi, hello, uh, ni hao, you know, so. So this is hello world in robot language. It's actually waving hello world. <laughs> and as you can see the output on here, it's giving me the PIR and it's got a bit of debug. Um, for that, I just installed eSpeak and the, uh, the other library that was required. I forget what it is, it's documented. When you control C, which I did with this one, uh, to stop it, Make sure, that's why I've got the six second delay, because if you try control C when it's halfway through a move, it'll just keep on moving <laughs> until the gears drop off again. <laughs> so, so I thought, well, this is cool. I've got it running from the command line. I've got it working with a sensor. So, I mean, there's a whole command line script that you can, you can pretty much write your own. You can have them on a cron, which works on a time-based thing. You can have them uh, do pretty much anything you want. So I thought, well, I didn't like the controller specifically. The buttons were horrendous. You couldn't figure out what knobs did what and how you moved them or anything else. So I thought, well, chuck it on a web server. So um, I actually don't really know much about setting up Python on web servers, sorry to say. Um, I just went and said, I'll oh, add type.py as a CGI and run it. <laughs> so um, there is the sensor set up there for the one I've got. And I've used Festival for some part of it. I started using Festival, and then I changed and used the Python library, which was, I thought was better for speak, because it's Python, you know. Um, for the, um, there is voice control. You can set up voice control using Python for Raspberry Pis, and there's quite a bit of documentation on YouTube and stuff, but it's a little bit complex because you either get stuck with their sam samples, which may not work with the New Zealand accent. Um, I didn't use them today because I wasn't sure of the noise and echo and whether it would pick up what I was saying. And then there's ones that are slightly harder to teach and work because they actually record your own voice as demos and it will pick that up so you can go, you know, arm up, arm down, pick up the cup, do this. So it could actually take voice commands if you wanted to set that up. But I intentionally didn't set it up because I wasn't sure on how well it would work in this environment with the noise. 
Um, but you can do that if you want to do, and it works quite fine. A lot of people use that for home automation stuff, um, which I'll hopefully will, that guy who's doing the home automation stuff tomorrow will do, <laughs> which would be quite cool, you know. But I mean, you can literally, if you're at home, just go, you know, pass me my apple, pass you your apple. <laughs> Make me coffee. Yeah. So I've installed Apache and configured it with CGI because for me that was the most simple. Actually, originally I have to say I did actually find a Python HTTP server. It was like about 10 lines of code. It was really easy and I ran that and that was awesome. And um, because of the power issues with the USB trying to get the Wi-Fi going, it just crashed and wiped the SD card repeatedly. So I've lost, I lost everything like three times and I actually only got it going. I've actually got a spare SD card. Should it do that now? But that's why they got the, the uh, hub at the moment anyway. So, um, so that's my idea of a UI. I thought, well, it's simple. It's got arrows. You don't need to know any language. You don't need to know what you're doing. However, you do have to think, because sometimes you want the arm to go up, but you'll push the arrow that way, thinking it's top, but it's actually not. It's rotating it that, in that direction, which actually may raise the arm or may lower. And, um, and a lovely GIMP, which helped me map all that to the CGI links. And if anyone's got a computer on them, you can test it. Anyone got a laptop open? Just browse it. I'm trying to overload it, because if you're all pushing it down, 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 it might go crunch, crunch, but um, you should be able to. Any command will last for about one second, because it's got the time out and st will stop it. So if you turn the light on, which is actually just here, it will actually um, turn it on for like one second, then turn it off again. But I mean, you can leave the light on if you wanted to on that particular one. Um, connect to the wireless uh, robot arm. It's an open wireless access point. You want to try it? There you go. <laughs> um, don't go too much that way because it's got wires here and you'll cut them off. <laughs> but that's actually the noisy way. If you move, bring it back this way, rotate it this way, click on the other one, you'll hear it's a lot quieter. Is it working? See? <laughs> Hang on. Stop clicking the buttons, you guys. <laughs> All right, who's doing it? It's not turning that way. For some reason, some of them are not working. I think I've, yeah. I think I've actually crimped the um, cable a bit because some of them are not working for some reason. Oh no, someone's got it going, not me. Maybe it's just overloaded. <laughs> anyway, try not to break it too much. But that's the interface. Um, if you guys can stop using it for a second. Because, I, because I'm a sucker for punishment. Um, we've also got this one. Don't maybe turn the wireless access point off for you. Um, I've also written this one, which of course speaks everything it's doing. Hang on. Um, I think it's actually queued up quite a few commands, so if you guys can just leave it for a second, let it calm down. Just, it's just getting a bit excited, you know. Okay, let's see. So I've got speak arm, because the other one was arm troll. Originally it was called control, and I realized that uh, what if there's something called control that you need to include, and, and that's probably not a good name. So I called it arm troll, you know. This is, um, this is the uh, speak one, which basically does the same thing, but it just speaks what it's doing. Just sounds kind of cool. It takes forever to do anything though because it speaks it obviously. But I mean, you can see with, with what you've got so far, you've already got speaking, you've got sensors, you've got any kind of cron task that Linux will do, and it's on the web, so you can probably do it via your phone actually, I suppose. But the image is quite big. So you guys are still playing with that. <laughs> see, someone's already found the speaking one. <laughs> Uh, 
Got to find the right key bindings for this. Oh. <laughs> it's having a fit, isn't it? No, I can't make this full screen again. In fact, it appears my thing has crashed. That sucks. Well, you've seen all the cool stuff anyway so far, I think. Um, <laughs> Let me see what I was up to. Um, yeah, that's the speech. That's the URL for the speech library I'm using. And there's the voice automation, uh, home automation one that I was looking at. There's about four different ones that I found which uh, worked, and some of them were easy to configure but not as good overall. Other ones were quite complex to configure, but you did a lot of work there to go into to getting them working in there, which is kind of a pain in the butt, really. Um, that's all my references. Oh, and a poem, which I thought was awesome. Pretty much describes everything I was doing. <laughs> so. Have you guys finished demolishing it yet? Sorry, my talk wasn't as long as I expected, but you can all play with the robot arm. <laughs> um, feel free to come and have a look at it and um, stuff if you want. Um, I also have some t shirts um, from my employer because if I'm ever going to go to a conference, I always make my employer give some shirts out. So, who would like a small shirt? <laughs> Whoops, let's pass it over to him. Be not allowed to break my robot though. Who wants a large? Oh. I don't know what this one is. Here's a large. Whoops. Can you wish Liz happy birthday? 